Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. So I guess we haven't done blue-black yet. So let's try that. So, definitely interested in playing the crab. Then we want some rogues. And the duelists could maybe make the cuts. The wind robber definitely. Play the black bloom, scavenger, thief, and Zareth. It's going to be a four off. So those are kind of the centerpieces. What else are we interested in? Probably Mimic to some extent. At least two. Could also play the Death Touch, two drop. And the Sky Dancer is another reasonable three, although the three drops are pretty stacked already. So it's mostly the early game where we've got a bit of room. This is Zendikar Constructed, so no Drown in the Locks, no Lofty Denials. So we're pretty limited in what cards we can play here. Probably play Thirsts as our cheap removal. We can... Maybe play like Soul Shatter as a 3 mana removal spell. Hagra Mauling is probably a good one too. Might even play the full sets. Although I do suppose it is kind of the same mana cost as a Kicked Thirst. So maybe I should just play it too and be a bit more conservative. Could also play Feed the Swarm as 2 mana interaction. I do like Agadim's Awakening in this deck too. It's also good in a mirror match. So I don't mind playing the full sets. And could make a case for Shadow's Verdict if we expect a lot of aggressive decks. And then our late game consists of Zareth hitting the opponents. Can just win by milling with Ruin Crabs and Thieves. And we've got Scavenger that's going to be a giant threat as well. Don't have a ton of card draw. So that's maybe something we want to work into the deck. Could also play Acquisitions Expert as a fine two-drop, although we're going to have a pretty small party, so it's not going to see a ton of cards. Could always play Anti-Cognition as two-mana interaction. That's maybe not a bad idea. Our deck does play more at sorcery speed than the standard variants, since we don't have as many instants. We don't have Brazen Borber to help us out. Could also play Cacophony if we're really serious about milling the opponents, which I could see as well. Could play Into the Royal as kind of our pseudo brazen borrower so those are considerations too maybe jace although it's another three drop and there's also the domination which could be pretty fun so we definitely have some options here inscription of insights so we don't have to necessarily play a very streamlined rogue aggro deck we could make it more of a mill deck i kind of like that idea although then zareth gets worse yeah, we don't have to play 24 lands plus 4 awakenings plus all the other dual face cards, so we do have a bit more room here. I'll try two dominations just to kind of test it out. Two inscriptions maybe. And two into the royals. And then I'm gonna say no to the cacophony. So what mill effects do we have? This can mill for one, this can mill for two each turn, this can mill for three. So we don't have that many mill effects, so we're probably more of a rogue beatdown deck than really a uh, deck that's planning to win by milling, in which case Cacophony would be more interesting. But even with Cacophony, winning by decking the opponent is going to be a bit challenging, I think. So I don't hate this setup. Got a bit more card draw now. We've got some nice dual faced creatures. And Zareth is kind of our big win condition. Could also make a case for the uh, negate or anti cognition. I haven't considered these yet. I don't think it's amazing. The fact that it doesn't even counter non creature spells makes it pretty narrow. And we've got some nice creature removal already with Thirst, Mauling. And there's not that many amazing enter the battlefield effect creatures in the set. 
So I'm not too worried about my opponent getting a bit of value. So I think we'll be okay. How many lands is this? 14 plus 8, 22. But then we also have the rogues and the mimics as additional lands and the mauling. So this is probably fine. And the uh, distribution, pretty even between blue and black. So 7-7. Seven, seven. I guess we've got the four awakenings. So I probably need a few more islands. Let's go up to 9, which bumps our number up to... 9 plus 4, 13, plus 2, 15, and then 9 plus 6, 15 black as well, if we count uh, dual-faced cards. All right, let's uh, pick some fancy basic lands here and see if this deck is any good. All right, this hand's not as bad as it looks. Next turn we can go Cramp plus... I guess we could also go for Thief, but my opponent will know about it. So we're not gonna catch them by surprise. So, yeah, I think I like Crab into probably Rogue Tapped. I've got a, another 3 drop with Scavenger, and I'll keep the Mauling in hand to maybe answer and posing Zareth. And we'll start milling the opponents. Interesting. They do have their own Thief. playing the cacophony as well. I think I'm just into scavenger and hope it survives. The alternative doesn't look great. Next turn we can kill the thief at least, but we'll probably have a few more cards in the graveyard. an aggressive attack. What could they have here? Can't think of much. Duelist, sure. They'll need a few more of those. Alright, <laughs> two duelists. I mean, it still has one power. So... We're still eating the thief here. All right, that wasn't so bad. And now we've got the Hagra Mauling to deal with the rogue. Probably okay to attack with the scavenger. Just to gain life back. If my opponent has a Zareth in hand, I might want to keep mauling just to answer that at instant speed. And we can always uh, play the thief instead end of turn. So yeah, keep up mauling for Zareth. Opponent's got another thief instead. Yeah, I guess I'm okay killing that one before the attack. And then the Agadim's Awakening is also looking good when my opponent's milling me. Can play it for three to good effects. Opponent's maybe gonna draw a card. Nope, mills me for eight. So we're down to 30 cards, still a long way to go.
opponent can jump and sacrifice so I don't gain any life. But we've got two blockers back now. All right, center opponent packs it in. So yeah, the Angadim's Awakening, great way to win the mirror match as well. Reclaim the wastes, all right, at least it's not the mirror match. Probably a blue-green kicker synergy deck. I'll hold on to the Mimic since we might copy the Thief or the Crab. A Roost of Drakes for one mana, so yeah, opponent's definitely serious about kicking stuff. Gonna be a Verizol for one, sure. So, yeah, Mimic copying Thief seems fine. Get to see some more cards from the opponent's deck as well. Inscription is a nice removal spell. Next turn I could play a Kicked Thirsts. Although Thirst for 1 mana also deals with Verosol, so that's nice. Could start my turn by just killing Verosol. Pwn probably has a Kicked into the Royal if I had to guess. So I don't necessarily want to kill Verazol because I'll still get use out of it before it dies. So I think I just move to combats. And then we'll probably get our two thieves bounced. And then I'll probably have to play this untapped and play double thief end of turn. There's also a case for just starting to copy the crabs. If we think the drakes are going to prevent my thieves from attacking, but with double thirst I can probably clear a path. Attacks with both. Um... I guess they could have like an inscription that they're trying to use. And if I block Crab on Verazol, inscription also puts additional counters on Verazol, so I'm not really into that whole thing. I could block the Drake token, which wouldn't be too bad if they put the counters there, because then Thirst kills it anyway. We'll see if they have a response to the Thief. They don't. Alright, they're just gonna enter the royal again. Fair enough, so I can play another thief to block the Drake. And that works out. Alrighty. So this turn, probably just play Thief and copy Thief.
Mill for six. Opponent's already halfway to our library. Kick bubble snare. But yeah, the passive ability from the thief still happens. So I'll start by killing a Drake. If that works. Yeah, I guess we'll just copy another thief here. If my opponent has inscription, they could put two counters on the drake, so maybe I will still kill it here. Just to get it out of the way. And hit for 10. And in the meantime, my opponent's down to 22 cards. We're going to mill them for 2 times 4 is 8. Yeah, can't think of any real sweepers here that my opponent could play. So we're looking good. Stormcaller, okay. Into a kicked. Inscription could be good. Yeah, it looks like an inscription to me. Our opponent gets to gain three fights if they want to. Just finds the crab. And then fights again. So they're at 11, so they're not technically dead. But they're pretty close to getting milled out. So they've got... Seven cards remaining. And a 10 powered scavenger, wow. Yeah, my opponent's got a nice mix of planeswalkers and enchantments too in there. Well, there we go. All right, not a great hand. We're mana light and we drew a lot of our expensive spells here with Domination, Insight, Zareth. I think this is a Mulligan. This is better. Probably go to bottom the Domination since we only have single islands. Turn two can keep up into the Royal, but probably just playing a Rogue Taps. Well, I guess now I can just play my land. Opponent on an ally deck. Red-white it looks like. Probably hang on to my Into the Royal for now. So your opponent's got six cards in graveyards. And next turn, if I play this as a land, we can turn this into a 5-3 menace. Alright, Thief isn't bad. So what type of game do we want to play? Are we racing? 
With two into the royals, not a crazy idea. Opponent does have a bit of removal here with binding and rebuke. Blade Master into Rebuke. Take six. I think I gotta stay back. And then the Vanguard says target creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal, so the Rogue should be able to block here. So I can let him attack and then maybe bounce the war leader at instant speed. Double cell sword. Well, now they had five warriors, but we're gonna put them back to four in response. And then we get to gobble up one of their creatures. Which one is scarier? Probably the Vanguard. And Scavenger is great in this type of matchup. So I can go Scavenger plus Robber. Could attack with a Rogue. Probably should have started there. And I'm happy if they double block. And then the Wind Robber can jump and sacrifice if needed. The Crab can also be sacrificed here. It did a, a nice job of filling the opponent's graveyard up to 8 cards to enable our synergies. Five powered soul sword. Can still chump and sacrifice, but they're probably gonna keep it on defense, so that runs right into our Blood Chief's thirst. Nope, still attacks. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, just block to play it safe. I mean, this only makes colorless mana, so they would have to like burn me to death, go like mountain into deal one damage to me. So it seems unlikely for them to kill me here, even if I take ten. But I guess I'll play it safe. Right, GG's. The Into the Royal wasn't really needed since we had Menace. So yeah, the Into the Royal definitely came in handy there. Being able to bounce the war leader and get a nice block in. So we're 3 0. Let's see if we can beat the final boss. And what about this hand? I don't have an early mill enabler. Although we could play like a fine control game with inscription to refuel. So I could still keep. All right, Charger. So an aggressive red deck. And drawing the Scavengers is great. I think I play Awakening Tapped. Doesn't seem like a matchup where I'm gonna actually cast it. But I could see playing Mimic to copy Scavenger. All right, into the Royals, a nice pickup. Oh yes. Equip Charger. And we're just gonna bounce the Charger, I believe. And then the equip cost is gonna be very expensive for them to replay it. Thief a nice draw. 
Although we're just going to play Scavenger. And then maybe next turn Thief to grow the Scavenger. We'll see. Alright, a different Maul. Hits me for six. Well, we do have to be careful here, because double strike does add up. Next turn they can equip the second Maul and deal a ton of damage. But yeah, we can't profitably block necessarily. I guess if I play a second Scavenger, even if they make Charger a five-powered creature, I still get to kill it, but then when a Charger dies, it deals even more damage. So I guess I could just bounce the two creatures here. And then next turn go a Thief plus Scavenger. Another Inscription. Could also use a Mimic to copy Thief. So I can mill my point a little bit more. Next turn they're gonna have Double Strike. If they have a land, they can double strike and equip another Maul, and I might even have to jump. Although I'll probably gain enough life here where that's not going to be necessary. Yeah, I think I like copying the Thief. This needs triple blue for Kicker, but I also, for Agadim's Awakening, need triple black. I think I still play this as an island, though. Eh, I guess if my plan is Scavenger plus a black spell next turn, I might want additional black mana. Alright. Back up to 12. Close game. Take three. Akiri, second main, keeps up two mana. So what kind of interaction can they have here? Hmm, I guess the one that deals damage equal to the party members. They've got two warriors. What else could it be? Yeah, they could have the instant that uh, moves and equipment to give Akiri flying and instant speed. So I think just inscription bouncing the two creatures is safest. Alright, sweet. Close one here against the Warrior's deck. But Inscription, being able to bounce creatures, the flexibility was awesome this game. So, it's interaction when you need it to be interaction. And a scar draw in the grindier matchups. So, sweet. Managed to get the clean 4-0 with our blue-black rogues deck and Zenicar constructed. So, definitely give it a try if you get the cards for it. And what do we get as a reward? A Threnody Singer, all the way from Theros, and a Cinderclasm. I'll take it. All right, that was fun. But for now, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.